Hello and welcome to Gina. In this video, we will be exploring various features of Gina Pro, including creating spawners, creating rivers, roads, and much more. If you wish to learn more beyond this video, Gina comes with documentation which is located in Procedural Worlds, Gina, Documentation. Here you'll find a complete guide on Gina, as well as an added API reference. Without further ado, let's get started. Here we have a demo project with Gina Pro installed, and I'm also using Gaia Pro for my terrains. Gina Pro also contains a list of asset samples, which I'll be using later in the video. So I'm gonna start by creating a Gina spawner in our scene by going to our hierarchy, right-clicking, go to Gina, and go to Add Spawner. So this will create a spawner game object that we can set up and we can start spawning things to our terrain. The purpose of a palette is to maintain all of the references to the assets that you attach to your spawners. For instance, you would have a palette to store all the prefabs that belong to a collection of assets. So let's go ahead and create a new palette and we have all of these settings that we can now play with. Genus spawners generally work from the top down. The overview panel contains the topmost settings required for the spawn. The placement criteria controls the algorithms used to select how and where prototypes can be placed. The spawn criteria controls when we can spawn using certain rules. For example, checking collisions, checking height, checking slope, and much more. The spawn prototypes panel defines all of your prototypes and settings that'll control how they will spawn to your scene. Then you've got advanced settings that you can manipulate and change. And down the bottom here, you can attach prefabs, terrain trees, details, or textures as prototypes to your spawner. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a prototype, which is a tree, and it'll show up in the prototypes. And if we go over to our terrain, we can hold down shift, the left shift button, and press the left mouse button, and we'll start to sample our terrain. What this does when you shift click is if you go to the spawn criteria, this will update our height samples and our slope ranges. And you can modify them thereafter by holding shift and changing the values. Now in this case, I'm gonna let Gina decide where the spawner's samples come from by shift clicking. And let's say I wanna spawn my tree right here. Now I'm gonna press the left control button and the left mouse button and we'll start to see trees spawn into our terrain. Now in here on out, we can just modify the spawner to place the trees however we wish. And we're gonna play around with this a little bit. So I'm gonna go back and undo all of our changes. And I'm going to increase the instances limit from 10 to 20. And this will randomly spawn 10 to 20 trees but they're all bunched up together. And the reason for this is because of our throw distance. So we're going to increase the throw distance. And now we'll start to see this spread out a little bit. I'm gonna undo all of this. I'm gonna show you another bit of settings. So the spawn criteria has all of these really nifty settings that we can use in order to modify how things will spawn into our terrain. So let's say we want a bunch of trees. Currently, we're checking collisions between the trees if you hold down shift and move your cursor around, you'll notice that there is a bit of a bounce. If I want this to be separate, I'll have to increase the bounds extends. And you'll notice when you hold down shift, the visualizer updates with the bounds. So now the trees will be separate from each other. Once you have the spawner the way you like it, you can now make a prefab out of it. I'm gonna create a tree folder and put my spawners in there. And now it's a prefab. So we can use it in all of our scenes. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a prefab spawner. So I'm gonna create a new spawner. I'm gonna use the old palette that I created. And I'm going to go to my prefabs file and grab any one of my prefabs and ingest it into Gina. So this is gonna be a house spawner. So I'm gonna shift click Control left click, and there's our house. But they are different sizes, so I'm gonna change this. We're gonna to go to our placement criteria and change our scale output to be a one-to-one. -one. 
Now they're all uniformed. You can also adjust the height offset after the spawn by going into any one of the prototypes and modifying the position modifier later. So I'm gonna raise it above the terrain a little bit by two and three. A little bit high because it's off the ground, but I'm going to undo that and I'm gonna modify this slightly one to two. And there we have it. Let's look at this other scenario. Let's say our game has all of these complete prefabs where when you spawn them into the terrain, they look like this. They're all complete. They have all of their layouts set up and we want to do smart spawning capabilities where all of our fences and all of our entities snap to the ground. To do this, we're going to use decorators. So currently, if we create a new spawner into our other palette, and we click and drag our completed prefab into our spawner, it'll spawn as a complete prefab, which is not entirely what we want. So what we're gonna do, we're going to look at our prototypes and you'll notice that when you open up the details of this prototype, it's treated as one single resource. This is not what we want because if you look at each of our prefabs, You'll notice that this prefab has a bunch of prefabs inside of it that we want to treat separately as separate objects in our spawner. This is where we can attach to the root a prefab unpacker decorator. And if we go back to our spawner, we'll have to re-ingest it by removing it from our prototypes and re-ingest it into our spawner. If you open up the prototype list, you'll notice that all of the nested objects have been included in the spawner. Now the purpose of this is so that we can have control over each one of the nested objects as we spawn our layout. If you switch over to dynamic, you can actually change individual objects to be snapping to ground, as well as the position modifier and the rotation modifier and conforming to slope. So I'm going to show you another decorator that we have, where if you open up your prefab, we can actually attach another decorator to our nested prefabs, where we can modify the transform component separately. This is called a Gina transform decorator. I want all of these objects to snap to ground. So I'm going to tick snap to ground and you can modify your positions accordingly depending on which objects that you want. So save this prefab, go back to our spawner and let's re-ingest this. You'll notice that all of them have been, set, have been set to dynamic. And if you open up individual ones, you'll see the snap to ground has been set. So let's go over to some hill over here and let's start spawning our houses. See how all of the individual pieces are snapping to ground. This is very useful because we can now smart spawn all of our objects and villages. Gina comes with some decorators, but you can also make your own custom decorators by referring back to the documentation. Gina comes with some sample packs that you can use. If you go to the Gina folder, go to asset samples, content packs, you can import either one of these two provided that you have the correct packages. So flooded grounds is required to be installed for the flooded grounds package and the flooded grounds can be found on the asset store. But if you are using the new unity, you'll have to search online for it. Let's go ahead and import flooded grounds. When installing the flooded grounds package, you'll only want to install the content and the prefab folders. If you have Unity's post-processing system installed, it'll try to also replace some of those files that are in there. You'll need to make sure that you untick packages as well. Otherwise you will get errors. Now that we have our package installed, you can go ahead and import the flooded grounds package inside the content packs folder of Gina. This will import a content packs folder inside of the procedural worlds folder. If we go to our spawners, you can click and drag one of these spawners out to see what they spawn. As usual, hold shift click and control click. 
So this spawner creates a whole set of series of cabins. And we can also spawn a church in our scene. As you can see, the spawner is using a decorator that flattens the terrain underneath it, which is the terrain decorator. You can spawn some houses. And we can also spawn a villa. And there we have it. So let's say that we wanted to spawn a river along this little ridge over here. What we would do is we'd right click, go to Gina and go to the river flow option. And you'll create this sampler object that you can use to create a spline that will allow you to modify and create a river. So I'm going to start a sample from about this high and I'm going to create a river and it will show you graphically where the river will flow. So in this case, it's going to go from up the ridge down to here into the river. And I'm going to create a river spline. So Gina has the capability now of, of creating splines and modifying them. And also it has the ability to attach special extensions to the spline so that you can perform operations along the spline. Now, before I get into the operations of the tool, I'm going to simplify the spline a bit. So there's a little bit less nodes between, it doesn't have to be super accurate. I'm also going to smooth the spline too. Next, I'm going to select the carve extension. I'm going to increase the width and the smoothness. And I'm also going to bring it down a little bit. Just view it in different angles. See if you like it. Yep. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to click carve. So what this has done is it's carved into the terrain and it's allowed our river to sit firmly within this. If we go to the river extension, we can also increase the start flow to make the river have more volume. Now this will take a bit of tweaking so that you can perfect it. And then lastly, I'm going to spawn a reflection probe along my spline so that it integrates to the terrain nicely. And there you have it. We have our river. Along with creating rivers, we also have the capability of creating roads. So you go right click on the hierarchy, go to Gina and go to add road spline. Now to add spline nodes, all you have to do is press control and select where in the scene you want the spline, the road spline to go. Might get it to go around the mountain a bit. get it to go through our town. You can also join it up at certain nodes. It will create intersections. Move this away a little bit. I'll also create a joint from here over to this town. and a little cut through the terrain. Now, along with the same carve extension we used before, we can also carve into the terrain where we want our roads to sit. It's important to do this so that the road doesn't cut into the terrain as it does when you first spawn it. So as soon as we carve into our terrain, you'll notice that it sits perfectly around our terrain like it's embedded into it. You can also fix up some areas if you don't like the way that it generated it by undoing and moving those nodes around. There we have it. You can also increase the smoothness and decrease the width.
And lastly, if you're using Gaia to spawn biomes, you can spawn your biome and Gina integrates well with it. After spawning your biome, you'll notice that Gaia has automatically ignored all of the Gina spawns and spawned in between all of the areas. And there you have it. Be sure to take a look at the documentation for anything else you wish to learn in Gina.